Hello students and uh, welcome for our seventh lesson in biology form two. So still we are dealing with the transports in plants. Uh, last time we talked about the photometer, how to measure the rate of transpiration using a photometer. We went through the whole procedure and so today we are going to summarize the photometer and later on we are going to look at translocation. Now, uh, the lesson objectives today at the end of this session you should be able to state the precautions that must be taken when using a photometer. At the same time, you should be able to give the limitations of using a photometer as an instrument in measuring the rate of transpiration. And then later on we are going to look at translocation and then um, some part, just an introduction to the circulatory system. Now, yesterday we looked at the photometer, and here is the photometer. And uh, we actually went through the whole procedure and we talked about looking at the time, the time taken. We said the photometer is used to measure the rate at which water is lost from the shoot in the form of water vapor. And as water is lost, more is absorbed. So as water is lost and more is absorbed, what happens is that the bulb this the gas uh, bubble, bubble, the bubble here, the bubble here will move. So we are supposed to measure the time taken for the gas bubble to move from this point to the end here, the time taken, that distance. That's what we are supposed to measure, the time taken for this bubble to move from this point to that end. So you can see the bubble is at this end. Then you stop your stopwatch. You read the time and also the distance. Now, so when using the photometer, when using the photometer, we are supposed to take certain precautions. And one of them is just on the screen that when cutting the shoot, the shoot of the plant must be cut under water. The shoot of the plant must be cut under water. This one is to prevent air bubbles from getting into the xylem. Like in that diagram, the picture, if you look at that picture there, you'll realize that this is what we said yesterday, that when you want to cut, bend the shoot into the water and then cut it. That is one precaution which must be taken. The second precaution is that all the air in the capillary tubule should be expelled to eliminate errors during uh, errors due to wrong volumes. So if there is any air in the capillary tubule, it must be removed. Because remember, air occupies volume. And when air occupies a volume within that, within the apparatus, then it will give you a wrong reading. So that one must be done. That's number two. Expel all the air in the capillary tubing. Then another uh, precaution that should be taken, the third one, is that the jelly should be applied around the stem. That is around the rubber band to make the apparatus airtight. The, no air should be allowed into the apparatus. The only thing that should be in the photometer during the experiment is water. And therefore, to prevent air coming in, then you must use Vaseline jelly to block an entry of air. And again, Make sure that the end of the capillary tubing should rest 
in the beaker of water during the experiment. Yes, it is here. So during the experiment, the end of the capillary tube must rest inside a beaker of water. So that as water is lost, more will be absorbed from beaker. And this one will also prevent, this one will also prevent the air from getting into the capillary tube. Air from getting into the capillary, capillary tube. So those are precautions that must be taken when using a potometer. Now, limitations. What are the shortcomings? This method is not error-proof. This method is not 100% perfect. So we have setbacks. We have limitations. So one of the limitations is that introducing an air bubble may not be easy. The process of introducing an air bubble into the capillary, just one air bubble, very difficult. So that is one limitation. The second limitation is that a twig may not remain fully alive for a long time. So that shoot, that plant that we are using, it may not remain alive for a long time. It may dry or it may wither or winter before the end of the experiment. And that is a setback or a limitation that can hinder the perfect results during the measurements of transpiration. Yes, and then the third limitation is that the potometer does not, does not measure the, what? the rate of transpiration accurately because not all water that is taken by the plant is lost. Now, let me explain that. You have the chute. That chute is connected to the potometer. And then you have smeared the Vaseline. Remember that the plant is absorbing water. And what does the photometer measure? The photometer measures the rate at which water is lost. So the question is, does the plant lose all the water it absorbs? No. The plant does not lose all the water that it absorbs. It does not lose all the water that it absorbs. So, if water is lost and the potometer is down there checking the rate of at which water is absorbed, you are measuring the rate at which water is absorbed to know the rate at which water is lost. So some water will remain in the system of the plant. That one is a source of error. Yes, so let us move to our second part of discussion, the one that we call translocation of organic compounds. Translocation of organic compounds. So the plant absorbs nutrients. These nutrients are from the soil. The plant take in, and these nutrients which are from the soil, they are mineral ions. The plant also take in air. And this is carbon-4 oxide gas. The plant through the roots take in water. What does the plant do with all these things? The plant uses water plus carbon-4 oxide Then, in the presence of 
sunlight which is trapped by chlorophyll and from there the plant will give several organic compounds glucose being the major one so in the leaves this process that I've just described here takes place in the leaves and we call it photosynthesis it is called photosynthesis we have learned about this process in form 1 so from photosynthesis we get glucose as an organic compound we get amino acids we also get fatty acids and some other products which are in form of simple sugars so these products which are formed in the leaves are normally carried to different parts of the plant so we have our plant this plant has got branches stems and leaves and this process we have just described occurs in the leaves even in a factory or in an industry for an industry to continue manufacturing the final products must be removed and sold to the consumers meaning whatever is being produced or whatever is being made by that company must have a market the finished product must be used by people so that more can be produced otherwise that company will stop producing so even in plants if the manufacturing sector here is the leaf manufacturing organic compounds through a process that we call photosynthesis then it means for the leaf to continue making more then whatever has been made must be current to other parts of the plant so these products like glucose like amino acids fatty acids and other simple sugars must be translocated or must be carried or transported to other parts of the plant so some are taken to the roots some are taken to the stem some are taken to the flowers some are taken to the seeds so when we talk of translocation as a process it is the transport of the soluble organic products of photosynthesis within the plant it is the transport of soluble organic products of photosynthesis within the plant and translocation occurs in the phloem tissue remember we have talked about the vascular bundles earlier and we said vascular bundle uh, is composed of the xylem vessel and the phloem tissue so now we are dealing with the phloem tissue so when the finished products when the products of photosynthesis are transported within the plant that process we call it translocation that is the biological term for the process and we have said that the organic products which are translocated we have sugar we have amino acids we have vitamins and we have fatty acids sugars 
one of the sugars that you have learned. Sugars mean the soluble carbohydrates. One of them is glucose. Yes, so those are the things that are, that are translocated within the plants. Now, so these products, these products we have said, they are taken to the growing, all the developing regions, growing or developing regions, and those regions are uh, examples. We have the young shoots, then we have the leaves, we have the flowers, we have the fruits, we have the roots. So those are areas within the plant that undergo development. And for development to occur, nutrients are required. That's why they are taking those, those sites. Now, I want to stress one thing. 